This week on Case Studies with the BizDoc, it's Shopify. You asked for it on my Discord channel, and I'm delivering it to you. From the history, to the venture funding, to the IPO, we've got the whole story and more this week. Shopify. We're doing it this week and BizDocs in a regular shirt because air travel is back here in the United States and so is lost luggage. Someday I'll find the BizDoc shirt that I was supposed to wear for this segment. But I'm down in sunny Florida talking about really sunny Shopify. I'm going to take you through the history, how it started, then the venture stage, then the IPO, and what happened along the way and who are they really competing with today. So let's start. Shopify was founded clear back here in 2006, a great idea from a guy named Tobias Lutk. Tobias Lutk is a Canadian and he joined up with these guys, Scott Lake and Daniel Wynand, and they conceived Shopify as a means to sell snowboards and it was called Snow Devils. So that was their original thought coming up to do that. We need a way to sell snowboards online and so let's put together a company, the thinking comes together, and three great guys that would not realize till about two years later just how big their idea was, create Snow Devil in 2006. Well, with a small company, you need capital, and so the first thing they did is went out and raised $250,000 in seed. So this is a true startup, because $250,000, you could probably find 20 people at 10,000 each, or maybe your parents had 50,000 in a savings account, but the point was, this is true seed. These these aren't people that came from money and somebody gave them a million dollars to start the company. So the seed. Now let's take a look at the venture money first so you can see how much money they raise. And when you compare this to monsters like Uber and Lyft, you'll see that they really didn't raise a lot of money because this is a retail platform play in the payment space that's going to redefine everything. So when you're thinking about the mega investments and the mega venture funded companies, this would not be one of them, but they would raise nine digits. Let's take a look. After the $250,000 in seed, they raised about $7 million. Isn't that interesting? Three years after they start, when it's a platform play, they attracted large United States venture capitalists. I mention United States because Tobias Scott and Daniel are in Ottawa, Canada. That's where the company was founded and formed. So this is a Canadian company that would impact the world stage in, in e-commerce and payments. So they raised $7 million. Bessemer Venture Capital out of Boston was one of the uh, premier and early investors in here come leading. Then in October of 2011, they would raise $15 million in a Series B. So you can see this is a pretty rational start for a, a startup that really had traction and products and going well. But you can see there was an inflection point where something happened and it went big. And we're going to get to that because they would raise $100 million in December of 2013, two years after raising this, giving their total venture raise of $122. $3 million driven by that $100 million Series C. And it wouldn't be too long after that, then May 21st of 2015, where they would go public with the IPO. Now let's see what drove all this, because this is very interesting. If you just looked at the venture funding, you would say, wow, looks like a, a really good company. Things are going well, but what the hell happened there? Somebody's willing to go from giving them 15 to give them 100. Let's take a look. So at the beginning of Snow Devil, before it would be recast Shopify, it was a tool to help enable e-commerce. Well, in 2009, there was a defining moment as they said, no, this could be a platform for everyone, not just a tool. This could be a platform with payments and inventory systems and everything that you need for e-commerce. So they launched it, and in the middle of 2010, it was announced that on a trailing 12-month basis, as I understand from the article, I hope that's correct, it was $100 million in sales among the retailers that were using Shopify. In other words, they had powered retailers for $100 million in total retail activity. That means this is really defining. And isn't it interesting, in December of 2010, the Series A for $7 million. There's the data point, becoming a platform, hitting nine digits in retail sales enablement, and you get $7 million in Series A from some of the biggest and most successful and influential venture capitalists in America, specifically Bessemer. Bessemer, by the way, which is the old U.S. steel money from years, 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 years ago, based in Boston. 
So along that same time, eBay buys Magento. Remember Magento was online shopping tool? eBay buys Magento. So there's things that are going on out there. And also you had Amazon operating a thing called the web store. So there was a lot of folks out there looking to enable uh, e-commerce for people. One of the things that happened right in this time frame was that Shopify said, we're not just going to enable e-commerce, we're going to enable commerce. And if you take a look at some of the articles that have been written in this time period, it was a subtle difference to say, hey, we'll enable commerce, which means they're competing with for small business, their business, to power their register and their store systems, becoming a commerce system, not just e-commerce. Very important point that happens there. So in 2013, they add payments. Then in 2014, they had a thing called Plus. Plus was for high volume retailers. It was a special version that was tailored to the needs of retailers that had incredibly high volumes of the products that they would sell. Also, take a look here. eBay buys Magento. And remember, eBay was struggling. It basically is now the one ads. It's gone up and down. It's had its financial woes. It closes the storefront and the Magento offering. They close it and they actually sold it for a loss. So help me out, crew. When they sold this for a loss, wasn't it like around 60%? Yes. Thank you very much. See, the Valuetainment crew is on the ball. So they sell for a 60% loss here. Then Amazon closes the web store and pushes Shopify. And a, in a complete brain fart, the BizDoc has written Spotify. So I must have had music on the mind there. But Amazon closes a web store and says, hey, use Shopify as a solution. Apparently, Amazon didn't see it as a big threat at that moment. Well, at the same time in here, here's the IPO. So here's high volume business, payments, 100 million in venture, things are going well, here comes the IPO. Well, unfortunately, with the IPO, for one, two, three years, they would be kind of rolling along, but actually growing very well. Let's look at the growth of revenue and loss since the IPO. So you have all these wonderful things that are happening. You know, eBay and Magento, they give up. Amazon closes web store, says, hey, go, go see Shopify. <clears throat> and for 2016, they were $389 million in revenue as a public company, and they lost 35. The following year, $673 million in revenue. They lost 39. Remember, red numbers are bad numbers. Then $1.1 billion in revenue in 2018, they lost 65. Then $1.57 billion in revenue and they lost 124. So let's take a look here. This scale is following on the hundreds. Normally uh, stock scales I am showing you are usually under 200 in terms of stock price. This one, there were no splits and everything, but nonetheless, it was really just hovering down at a very modest level. It's a multi-billion dollar value company, but it's not taking taking off until 2020. In the year of COVID, when retail was pinched severely, look what happens. They deliver $292 billion and they make a net income profit of $319 million. The red turns green. Look at the stock. It goes all the way up to $1,500 a share and it's a $180 billion valuation. It's heading to Mars with Elon Musk in his little red car. And there's only one word for that and that is damn. Everything they built really came to fruition and it shot to the moon in 2020 as North American retail was heading to Middle Earth or the core of the Earth, however you want to look at it. But North American retail through COVID and other things that have been happening in digital commerce is heading down. And people are looking at it and saying the total addressable market is probably $78 billion. A total addressable market means how big is the market you're in? Analysts and other people will take a look at those things and make an estimate. So if they think that market is a $78 billion market and they're doing only $3 billion now, they believe that Shopify has got a lot of the market that they can go conquer. And right now, let's take a look at what's in that $3 billion, 2.92 for 2020, $3 billion. Half of it is monthly recurring revenue, means these are people that are subscribing. And 72% of the 40% is SMBs, small business. 
23% of that is plus larger high volume businesses. So they've got a blend of everybody from high volume businesses to SMBs. Then on this side, merchant solutions and payments, the 60% of revenue that's on merchant solutions, 74% of that is payments. So take a look at the three avenues that are dominating the revenue mix and what's happening to retail and what happens with COVID. It was a perfect storm that drove Shopify up. Now, I'm going to have a future case study within three weeks where I'm going to take a look at Amazon, I'm going to take a look at Walmart, and I'm going to take a Shopify and see what is happening in commerce and show you another reason why they're heading here is they're successfully competing against those giants, and they recently just cut a deal with Google to do so. But before we get to that, which I promised to do so we can dive in a little deeper and unpack all that part of modern e-commerce and commerce, digital enabled commerce world, let's take a look at the lessons we can learn from Shopify. The first thing, platforms rule. When you can really truly be a platform, you attract the attention of investors that are willing to go big. Finally, no ego, build versus buy. They made about 12 acquisitions in here of small technologies and small companies. They built their platform, but they were also unafraid to use the capital from the IPO and from their venture stage to go out and buy something. As long as it fits in and it's not a force fit, buy versus build is a time-based evaluation you can do. And if you've got the money and it'll fit in and you feel you can in integrate it properly, you can buy. And finally, what got you here won't get you there. There's been something in the news lately that a lot of you will probably make comments about. Oh, I see all their executives leaving. Well, look, these are executives, some of which have been here the whole time, running hot for these 14 years that this has been in business. And they've also had their own stock. So they made a little bit of money. And some of them just said, wow, you know what? I think this chapter is done. It's time for someone else to stand in my shoes. And I'm willing to do something else. And I think there's more of that than there is some fire and brimstone or horrible leadership going on um, that is driving them out. I, I happen to think that it's merely what got you here won't get you there. And now it's time to go find people that are accustomed to working in the two, five, ten billion dollar revenue world and bring them in to Shopify and to expand the, the, the brain power that you have there. So I don't think that what we're reading here is bad. I think it's where the company is going. And that is part one of what will be a two-part case study. The second part, we're gonna look at Walmart, we're gonna look at eBay, we're gonna look at Amazon, and we're gonna look at Shopify and see how Shopify is competing with them. And that's what we're gonna do next time. But this first part of it was just to show you the history, the venture stage, and the IPO, and the things that happened here that have created a great company. Well, that's what I think, but what do you think about Shopify? Leave some comments down below. I answer as many as I can. And while you're there, please subscribe to Valuetainment and hit the bell so you get notifications of more great case studies and other wonderful content here on Valuetainment, the best channel on the internet for entrepreneurial content. If you like this case study, check out one of these from the BizDoc archive. I'm sure you'll like it as well. Until next time, I'm Tom Ellsworth, the BizDoc, and I hope I left you better than I found you.